Okay, we're back. It's your art escort, and the book we're going to talk about today is a street art stencil book. And in this book, you can see many of these images, and what you've got um, is stencils that are in this book for uh, graffiti street artists that like to do stenciling. So let's take a look. For example, what they do in this book is they feature one artist at a time, and then that artist has put a stencil in the book that you then can take out of the book. So I'm going to kind of flip through the book. Let's see here. And let's see if we can find some of these other stencils. Every, every, uh, every artist has a stencil. Now what happens here with these stencils is you um, take them out, you draw them or photocopy them, and you can increase them to be as big as you want or as little as you want. And there's many, many different stencils. And these stencils then get sprayed on the street. Um, what I found really interesting, I've been having an interest in graffiti art. Well, I guess being born in New York and, and constantly going back to New York as a child and seeing the, the painting on the trains and the paintings on the walls, there's clearly artists who know how to do street writing, graffiti street writing, and then it started to become more art, where these people were amazing with the art they made. But because the art can be canceled at any point in time by um, another graffiti artist just painting over it and starting all new, or by the city uh, or state coming in and cleaning it, uh, what started happening was people started photographing and videotaping and making movies of this to create a um, a history of the art because it, it can go away. Well, um, then the other thing is because it became more legal and it became more of a, an actual ism, graffiti-ism, I would call it, is the, the street art movement. Um, the artists becoming uh, more than wanting to just write words and letters started designing stencils at their home or their residence, their studio, and then taking the graffiti stencils out to the street where they could um, uh, cover larger territory much faster, much more preci precise, with less time at risk for the police to catch them. Now, one of the very first uh, graffiti artists in Europe is this guy. And um, he is known for um, making a rat. And he, let's see if I can get you this little rat up here. Right here. Okay. See if you can see that little rat. But then he obviously has uh, um, much more sophisticated art. He was born in, I think it was 1951, uh, in Paris. He continues to work in Paris. He saw the art in the um, 70s from New York, which is where I'm from, and started doing this all over uh, Paris. And he's the original stencil, stencil artist, they believe. Now, Banksy, which has gotten so much news, which I really, really liked a lot of Banksy's work, but as I continued to delve more into Banksy's work, I saw that he kind of copied ideas from this guy, the rat guy, and then he's taking credit for it. and. I kind of lost some credibility in my mind because he, he wasn't the in innovator of the stencil and he wasn't the innovator of the rat and a lot of his are actually modified duplicates of somebody else's work and he's even admitted it. In the beginning, uh, the Black Le Rat liked the ability that Banksy from London was in fact uh, professionally plagiarizing and modifying his stencils. but. Le, uh, blank, blank, blank Le Rat doesn't really kind of like it now. But um, it seems like the intention, the original intention of graffiti art was to get messages out, to communicate to people, have an audience that sees you work. It wasn't about the commercialism of your art and being an artist that I desperately want to be known, I want to become famous. So. Uh, but that's kind of the direction it's going these days, is that some of these artists have gone away from that, the, the rules of the street for graffiti street art and are trying to use it as a way to promote themselves and market themselves. And Banksy has gotten into um, 
had a movie made, and there's a lot of, it's a really good movie, I'm going to talk about that video, I think it's really worthwhile seeing it, but is it authentic or not, and whether Mr. Brainwash, who's another graffiti artist in Los Angeles, a Frenchman, is really valid, or whether Banksy put him up to it, it's all unknown. Um, and um, what is also happening is there's another artist, King Robo, I think is his name, Robo, in London, who was a graffiti artist way before Banksy and is really, truly an artistic artist with a spray can. He doesn't have to rely on stencils. He gets out there and he creates his work freehand on the street without stencils, although he's starting to do some stencils. And he just had his first gallery showing, I think it was in a studio maybe called Pure Evil. But then um, some bad things have happened. He got into a rivalry with Banksy, uh, King Rojo, Robo, Robo, excuse me. And uh, Banksy got into a rivalry of destroying each other's uh, street art. And I think it started more with Banksy going after Robo's street art and then Robo going after Banksy Street Art, because one of the rules is, is that if you create a mural and you are a graffiti artist, and another artist comes along, you are not supposed to take your mur mural and incorporate it into their mural. You can't plagiarize going in and modifying their art to let part of their art be your art. And that's what Banksy was doing, um, which then has made a huge movement against him. Um, the thing that is interesting is, King Robo, in one of his last adventures of making street art, appears to have had a serious near-fatal fall uh, where he had to be put into an induced coma for I don't know how many months, and he's out of the coma, but he's, his family has asked for them to be left alone, and he was just hitting the pinnacle of his career for the second time, because he was the original street artist in London that covered all the trains. And I guess, to some degree, Banksy had showed him some disrespect. At least that's the story of these two kind of fighting back and forth. Um, I only wish the best for King Robo and that he returns. Uh, brain injuries are not good. I know the story. I, I went to his page and I gave him a little comment on his page to his family as to what type of brain scan to figure out exactly where the damage is. And it's not going to be a long haul. It sounds as though part of the damage might be irreversible. But anyway, um, it's an interesting book, and it, it outlines many different uh, artists. You've got here, let's see, Pure Evil, Paul Insect, uh, Nick Walker, um, Mantis, these are street artists, their name, M City, Logan Hicks, sometimes they use Jeff Aerosol, find that ironic, Aerosol can, Hush, and they're afraid to use their own names because what they're doing is illegal. Uh, Enine, E-I-N-E. -E. Um, and then you've got Fless and uh, Deface, C215, and Borf, and uh, Black Larat. Ben Frost, Bandit, B Toy, Alexandre Orion, Aiko, A I K O, and then it shows all kinds of images. But it helps you understand um, this entire movement, and then the so when you see some of these little stencils showing up. I see them showing up and they're not done very well here in my little city. But then other times they're done amazing. These are graffiti artists that are um, doing the stencil movement, but there's a lot of different types. So we're going to talk about it more because when I had gone down to Naples with Ettore, I saw some amazing street art. And Ettore, who's a film director, didn't understand what it was. And I said, Ettore, there's something going on here. I, I can't tell you what it's about, but I can tell you. There's, these are not just people that are uneducated with spray cans. They're some professional artists. And, and that, for the second time, piqued my interest in researching on this topic. So in the future, when my health is up to it, I want to go down to Naples and do some street art videos capturing the street art of um, Naples. And then probably 
when I get a chance, I'll do some in the States. But we're going to talk about that whole idea because um, a lot of times an ism in art, ISM, modernism, cubism, um, fractionism, the isms aren't noticed until they've been going on so, 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 so long and somebody puts a name on it. So uh, I think it should be graffitiism, stencilism, you know? Put the ism on them, what the hell? Isms on everything else. Okay, um, I'd say I, I like this book. I'm glad I've got it. It really, um, not that I'm going to go out there and spray paint anything, um, but it, it gave me the idea of why I'm seeing these little things show up. The other thing with these artists is they will often somehow get a crew behind them. I don't know how they get money saved, but then they travel to another country. They have their trademark tag. They've got their um, trademark images, and they go to these other countries and start making sure their images get put in all these different countries, and then they get photographed, and this artist has been around the world with his graffiti. And then by putting it in a book, and someone like myself, which I'm not going to do it, you take the stencil out, you photocopy it, you draw it, you trace it, and then you can make bigger copies of all different sizes, and then you go out and stencil it, and then somebody thinks, wow, the stencil was done by Black Lorat in Paris, but in fact it wasn't. It was one of his groupie followers. And that it's um, they definitely have a following. Uh, in another video, I want to talk about more about this war that's going on with um, King Ro Robo and Banksy, and uh, although Robo, I sure hope he comes back. Good luck. Okay. Bye.